Section 7 of Aesop's Fables, A New Translation Written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org This section has been read by Rosalind Carlyle. The Blacksmith and His Dog A blacksmith had a little dog, which used to sleep when his master was at work but was very wide awake indeed when it was time for meals. One day his master pretended to be disgusted at this, and when he had thrown him a bone as usual, he said, What on earth is the good of a lazy cur like you? When I am hammering away at my anvil, you just curl up and go to sleep, but no sooner do I stop for a mouthful of food than you wake up and wag your tail to be fed. The moral of this story is, those who will not work deserve to starve. The Stag at the Pool A thirsty stag went down to a pool to drink. As he bent over the surface, he saw his own reflection in the water and was struck with admiration for his fine, spreading antlers. But at the same time he felt nothing but disgust for the weakness and slenderness of his legs. While he stood there looking at himself, he was seen and attacked by a lion, but in the chase which ensued, he soon drew away from his pursuer, and kept the lead as long as the ground over which he ran was open and free of trees. But coming presently to a wood, he was caught by his antlers in the branches, and fell a victim to the teeth and claws of his enemy. Woe is me, he cried with his last breath, I despise my legs which might have saved my life but I gloried in my horns, and they have proved my ruin. And the moral of the story is, what is worth most is often valued least. The Dog and the Shadow A dog was crossing a plank bridge over a stream with a piece of meat in his mouth, when he happened to see his own reflection in the water. He thought it was another dog with a piece of meat twice as big, so he let go his own, and flew at the other dog to get the larger piece. But, of course, all that happened was that he got neither, for one was only a shadow, and the other was carried away by the current. Mercury and the Tradesman When Jupiter was creating man, he told Mercury to make an infusion of lies, and to add a little of it to the other ingredients which went to the making of the tradesman. Mercury did so, and introduced an equal amount into each in turn, the tallow chandler, and the greengrocer, and the haberdasher, and all, till he came to the horse dealer, who was the last on the list, when, finding that he had a quantity of the infusion still left, he put it all into him. This is why all tradesmen lie, more or less, but none of them lie like a horse dealer. THE MICE AND THE WEASELS There was a war between the mice and the weasels, in which the mice always got the worst of it, numbers of them being killed and eaten by the weasels. So they called a council of war, in which an old mouse got up and said, It's no wonder we are always beaten, for we have no generals to plan our battles and direct our movements in the field. Acting on his advice, they chose the biggest mice to be their leaders, and these, in order to be distinguished from the rank and file, provided themselves with helmets bearing large plumes of straw. They then led out the mice to battle, confident of victory. But they were defeated as usual, and were soon scampering as fast as they could to their holes. All made their way to safety, without any difficulty, except for the leaders, who were so hampered by the badges of their rank that they could not get into their holes, and fell easy victims to their pursuers. The moral of the story is, greatness carries its own penalties. The Peacock and Juno The peacock was greatly discontented, because he had not a beautiful voice like the nightingale, and he went and complained to Juno about it. The nightingale's song, said he, is the envy of all the birds, but whenever I utter a sound, I become a laughing-stock. 
The goddess tried to console him by saying, You have not, it is true, the power of song, but then you far excel all the rest in beauty. Your neck flashes like the emerald, and your splendid tail is a marvel of gorgeous colour. But the peacock was not appeased. What is the use, said he, of being beautiful with a voice like mine? Then Juno replied, with a shade of sternness in her tones, Fate has allotted to all their destined gifts, to yourself beauty, to the eagle's strength, to the nightingale's song, and so on to all the rest in their degree, but you alone are dissatisfied with your portion. Make then no more complaints, for if your present wish were granted, you would quickly find cause for fresh discontent. The Bear and the Fox a bear was once bragging about his generous feelings and saying how refined he was compared with other animals. There is, in fact, a tradition that a bear will never touch a dead body. A fox who heard him talking in this strain smiled and said, My friend, when you are hungry, I only wish you would confine your attention to the dead and leave the living alone. The moral of the story being... A hypocrite deceives no one but himself. The Ass and the Old Peasant An old peasant was sitting in a meadow, watching his ass, which was grazing close by, when all of a sudden he caught sight of armed men stealthily approaching. He jumped up in a moment and begged the ass to fly with him as fast as he could, or else said he, we shall both be captured by the enemy. But the ass just looked round lazily and said, And if so, do you think they'll make me carry heavier loads than I have to now? No, said his master. Oh, well then, said the ass, I don't mind if they do take me, for I shan't be any worse off. THE OX AND THE FROG Two little frogs were playing about at the edge of a pool when an ox came down to the water to drink, and by accident trod on one of them and crushed the life out of him. When an older frog missed him, she asked his brother where he was. "'He is dead, mother,' said the little frog. "'An enormous big creature with four legs came to our pool this morning and trampled him down in the mud.' enormous was he was he as big as this said the older frog puffing herself out to look as big as possible oh yes much bigger was the answer the frog puffed herself out still more was he as big as this said she oh yes yes mother much bigger said the little frog and yet again she puffed and puffed herself out till she was almost as round as a ball. As big as... she began, but then she burst. The Man and the Image A poor man had a wooden image of a god, to which he used to pray daily for riches. He did this for a long time, but remained as poor as ever, till one day he caught up the image in disgust, and he hurled it with all his strength against the wall. The force of the blow split open the head, and a quantity of gold coins fell out upon the floor. The man gathered them up greedily and said, Oh, you old fraud, you, when I honoured you, you did me no good whatsoever. But no sooner do I treat you to insults and violence than you make a rich man of me. Hercules and the Wagoner a wagoner was driving his team along a muddy lane with a full load behind them, when the wheels of his wagon sank so deep in the mire that no effects of his horses could move them. As he stood there looking helplessly on, and calling loudly at intervals upon Hercules for assistance, the god himself appeared and said to him, "'Put your shoulder to the wheel, man, and goad on your horses, and then you may call on Hercules to assist you. If you won't lift a finger to help yourself, you can't expect Hercules or anyone else to come to your aid. 
the moral here being that heaven helps those who help themselves. The Pomegranate, the Apple Tree, and the Bramble A pomegranate and an apple tree were disputing about the quality of their fruits, and each claimed that its own was better of the two. High words passed between them, and a violent quarrel was imminent, when a bramble impudently poked its head out of a neighbouring hedge and said, There, there, that's enough, my friends, don't let us quarrel. The Lion, the Bear, and the Fox A lion and a bear were fighting for possession of a kid, which they had both seized at the same moment. The battle was long and fierce, and at length both of them were exhausted, and lay upon the ground severely wounded and gasping for breath. A fox had all the time been prowling round and watching the fight, and when he saw the combatants lying there too weak to move, he slipped in and seized the kid and ran off with it. They looked on helplessly, and one said to the other, Here we've been mauling each other all this while, and who is the bear for except the fox? The Black Amour a man once bought an Ethiopian slave, who had a black skin like all Ethiopians do. But his new master thought his colour was due to his late owner's having neglected him, and that all he wanted was a good scrubbing. So he set to work with plenty of soap and hot water, and rubbed away at him with a well. But all to no purpose, his skin remained as black as ever, while the poor wretch all but died from the cold he caught. The Two Soldiers and the robber. Two soldiers travelling together were set upon by a robber. One of the soldiers ran away, but the other stood his ground, and laid about the robber so lustily with his sword, that the robber was fain to fly and leave him in peace. When the coast was clear, the timid one ran back, and, flourishing his weapon, cried in a threatening voice, Where is he? Let me get at him, and I'll soon let him know who he's got to deal with. But the other replied, Hmm, you're a little late, my friend. I only wish you had backed me up just now, even if you'd done no more than speak, for I should have been encouraged, believing your words to be true. As it is, calm yourself. Put up your sword, there's no further use for it. You may delude others into thinking you're as brave as a lion, but I know that at the first sign of danger you run away like a hare. End of section 7